The New York Jets dress up as a zombie for Halloween and keep their season alive against the Houston Texans on Thursday night football. That and more on today's edition of Locked On NFL. The new Locked On NFL. The madman Tyler Rowland is your double shot of NFL espresso. With the Locked On local experts on every major story. Get ready, Rowland is revving up. The new Locked On NFL starts now. Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Football fans, welcome in to the Locked On NFL Podcast, bringing you a double dose of the NFL's biggest stories with help from our local experts that know your favorite teams like no one else. I am your host, the madman, Tyler Rowland, joined today by Locked On NFL expert Louis DiBiase on today's show. Of course, we're going to give you some of our best bets of the weekend, including the Los Angeles Rams going up to take on the Seattle Seahawks, the Green Bay Packers, and a huge NFC North clash against the Detroit Lions. But we are going to start with this crazy Halloween game between the New York Jets and the Houston Texans. Before we dive into it, do want to thank you for making the Locked On NFL Podcast your first listen of the day and for being an everyday or here with us at the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Louie, I hate to be corny, but the Jets did turn into zombies and keep their season alive in this one. Yeah, and Tyler, I'm starting to think there's a lot, maybe too much on C.J. Stroud's plate dealing with these Texans' problems. 100%. And my guy John Butchko from Locked On Jets is going to break down this big victory for the team from Gotham. The Jets dress up as a real football team on Halloween. I'm John, the host of Locked On Jets, and the New York Jets have ended their five-game losing streak, defeating the Houston Texans 21-13 to on Thursday night football. It was not a good first half for the Jets. They trailed 7-0 heading into the locker room. They had only 32 passing yards in the first two quarters and a number of unforced errors. Most notably, Malachi Corley prematurely celebrating a touchdown, dropping the ball at the one-yard line and the ball rolling out of the end zone for a touchback. But the Jets were able to overcome their errors with a strong second half. Aaron Rodgers had three touchdown passes in the second half. Two of them were spectacular catches by Garrett Wilson. Devontae Adams also added a touchdown reception. And the Jets defense got eight sacks on C.J. Stroud. It's going to be a long road back for the Jets at 3-6. and six, But at least for one night, Jets fans can celebrate because the five-game losing streak is over. For more on the Jets, tune into the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That's the crazy part about it. And look, I got to eat some crow here. On yesterday's show with Michelle, the data queen, we were both like, how in the world? are the Jets, uh, like, the favorites in this game? How are the Texans the underdogs? But the Jets really controlled this, and honestly, they should have won by more. Obviously, John mentioned Malachi Corley dropping the ball at the goal line, but they also had a roughing the punter. They also had a, a snap penalty on a, a field goal attempt. Like, the Jets did a lot of dumb things in this game that typically this season have gotten them beat, but Aaron Rodgers and his connection with Devontae Adams and, of course, Garrett Wilson making one of the most incredible catches that we've ever seen. That kept this Jets season alive. And, and Louie, I got to tell you, you look at the rest of this schedule. They play the Cardinals. Then they play the Colts. Then they play the Seahawks, the Dolphins, the Jags. Like, they have a chance to get back to 500 pretty quickly here. Yeah, and look, there's a lot of problems still with the Jets. And as you mentioned, yes. they had to overcome a lot of moments where they shot themselves in the foot. And that's... Often a sign of a team that's good, not great, and oftentimes right. underachieving. And we know that's the Jets this year. Mm -hmm. But if they do get that Aaron Rodgers of the second half that went 15 of 18 for 179 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, Ooh. a 147.7 rating, mm -hmm. with Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams combining for over 180 yards in this game, including that incredible one-hand catch in the second half, yeah, do I suddenly think the New York Jets are a Super Bowl contender because they won this game? Absolutely not. But do yeah. I think they could go on a little bit of a run and jump a team like the Bo Nix-led Denver Broncos or the Justin Herbert up-and-down weird yeah. Los Angeles Chargers and, and jump the Joe Flacco now-led Indianapolis Colts? Absolutely. I, I think mm -hmm. the Jets have enough talent where, again, I don't think they're a Super Bowl contender this year. There's a lot of long-term issues they have to fix. But if they get – like even this version of Aaron Rodgers, who's still not like the past MVP version, that could be enough in this weird AFC wildcard race 
to make it interesting at the end, for sure. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. And one thing that I've been saying for quite some weeks is the Jets play like a team that that doesn't have a soul. Like, you can tell that yeah, they're right. not a bunch of dudes who are drafted together, who developed together, or have been through battles together. It's a lot of mercenaries that were brought over. Can I make a comparison? Make work. Sure. It's very much like I cover the, the Locked on Eagles podcast, of course, for the network. It's very much like the 2011 Dream Team Eagles, where they thought we can sign Namdi Asamoah, Colin Jenkins, Jason Babb, and all nope. these mercenaries and make a team that way. It never works that way, Tyler. 100%. And what's funny is we listened to a clip from John Butchko of Locked on Jets earlier in the week where he basically made that comparison. So you're 100% mm -hmm. right there. But wins like this. Wins like this can create some of that togetherness to maybe maybe not completely fix that problem, but patch it up just a little bit to make sure that the Jets can maybe make that slide into the back end of the wild card race. On the other side of things, the Houston Texans. Obviously, they're missing Nico Collins. They're not going to have Stephon Diggs for the rest of the year. Will Anderson leaves in this game. But there are some serious problems with the Houston Texans here that, that I think we can't ignore. Like the offensive line, C.J. Stroud has now been sacked 30 times and. While I don't think that anybody should panic about Stroud himself, I did see a crazy statistic where if you look at the best rookie seasons for EPA per play, expected points added per play for rookie quarterbacks in the past 10 to 20 years, Stroud is in there. But if you look at the splits of them playing outdoors, Stroud was the only one of those top rookie quarterbacks that had a negative EPA per play outdoors. So that is something at least that I think we have to keep in mind that the offensive line isn't good. He's not getting Stephon Diggs back. And this is a team that has made a lot of big plays, like explosive mm. plays. But down to down, they have not been very good this year. And I think it's possible that this Texans team, while they're going to run away with the AFC South, no question about it, they may not be as formidable of a team as they were last year, which is kind of surprising. Yeah, Tyler, I haven't seen that next gear, right? They were 6-2 right. and two heading into this game, but it felt like there was a level of play they got to last year on both sides of the ball that I haven't seen this year. And yeah, a lot of that has mm -hmm. to do with the offensive line. C.J. Stroud got sacked again eight times today. He's without two of his three starting wide receivers. Will Anderson goes out, as you mentioned. But still... There is just like a, another gear that they haven't kicked into this year, and I just don't know if they're able to right now, personnel wise. And I think that is holding back CJ Stroud. And it's, you know, starting to get me thinking about long term. Okay, how many teams are legitimate contenders for a Super Bowl in the AFC? I thought Houston was in that tier with Baltimore, Buffalo, Kansas City. I'm starting to wonder after watching this game. I don't want to jump the gun because they do have a lot of injuries, but I'm starting to think the AFC is more of a three team race when it comes to like elite teams that can seriously contend for a title. Right now, again, like you said, like I don't want to blame Stroud completely, but I don't see a, a title contender right now in this Houston team. Even though that they have a high floor, I really don't see the ceiling right now. And that was kind of the whole point of this team this year. Yeah, you would think they would take that next step. And yeah. even though that their record now is six and three and it's still good, I'm I'm not certain that they've done that either. I think that's a fair question. But yeah. speaking of one of those title contenders in the AFC, we're going to talk about the Baltimore Ravens because the Broncos and Ravens is actually a big game. Got my best bets of the weekend, and Louie's got some of his best bets of the weekend coming up. It's FanDuel Friday. Don't forget it. And it's Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the best place to buy tickets period. They have the best features in the industry, and they just got a brand new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. The NBA season has now kicked off. You want to go check out your favorite NBA team? Make sure that you use Game Time Picks because it filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. And of course, it's not just Game Time Picks. The other great features that Game Time has to offer. Obviously, you got the Game Time guarantee, so you're getting the lowest price. You get a panoramic view from your seat, so you know what you're going to be looking at when you sit down. And if you toggle on the feature, you're going to get all-in pricing. So the price that you see is the price that you pay with no surprise fees at checkout. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NFL for $20 off. Your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? 
game time. Today's episode is also brought to you by Five Hour Energy. Our friends at Five Hour Energy know that being a passionate football fan isn't just a hobby. It's a way of life. It takes a lot of energy to power through all-day tailgates, touchdown celebrations, or agonizing second overtimes, which is why they've created the Stand the Fan 5-Hour Energy Shot with special flavors, and the Fan Fuel flavor is absolutely to die for. It's an energy shot made just for super fans like you, the fans who are first in the parking lot and who are last to leave. We see you. Make sure that you have the energy for that huge play in the big game, for the big upcoming match, for the exciting moments that your friends and you are watching at the tailgate. Five Hour Energy knows that no matter what team you root for, being a fan requires heart, soul, and a lot of energy. Whether you're prepping for the big tailgate or ironing your jersey, your game day to-do list is always a mile long. That's why the limited edition Stand the Fan Five Hour Energy Shot is here to help keep you fueled throughout the season. What's your fan fuel this week? Whatever it is, do it with Five Hour Energy available at fivehourenergy.com. Ship nationwide. All right, Louie, let's continue today's edition of Locked On NFL. We talked about that Thursday night game. It turned into a good one. They're at the end, and the Jets keep their season alive in a way. But now, as we always do on our Friday show, it's time to focus on some of the best bets of the weekend for our FanDuel Friday. And I am going to start with a big-time matchup in the NFC. You have the Green Bay Packers against the Detroit Lions. It seems like every single week there's a huge matchup in the NFC North, man. Those teams are all just so good, Mm -hmm. and they're fighting with each other all the time. And right now, there's a big question for the Packers. Who is going to play at quarterback in I honestly think that they need to go with Malik Willis, but what does my guy Peter Bukowski from Locked On Packers think? There is a point at which having Jordan Love at, let's call it 65, 70%, is not as good as having Malik Willis at 100%. And we saw we saw some of the reasons why. The Packers are, I've been joking all week, Matt, two and a half and oh when Malik Willis plays because he got half against the Jaguars. But they beat the Colts. They, they beat the crap out of the Titans. And, and they come back to beat this Jaguars team or at least come back to take the lead. Um, and, and it took a two minute drive to do it. The Packers are going to feel fine about Malik Willis as their starting quarterback most weeks now against a team as good as Detroit. It's going to be much tougher, but if, if love can move the way that he did against Minnesota, just from a pure movement movement standpoint, that's probably good enough. I have to imagine he's going to at least try to play. Um, but who knows, maybe that means having some Malik Willis third down packages or, or just having, having something in the game plan for, They'll they'll prepare for a package of plays if they need it, but they're ready to go with Malik Willis if they need to. Louie, in my opinion, the Packers need to ride with Malik Willis. Don't play this game with an injured Jordan Love. And I'll tell you this, the Tennessee Titans got walloped by the Detroit Lions last week, but they ran for over 140 yards, and they had some good moments in the first half before the Lions special teams unit really totally changed the game. If I'm the Packers, I'm playing Malik Willis. I'm running the Mm -hmm. ball down their throat. And, Louie, that is why Green Bay Packers money line plus 124 on FanDuel, one of my best bets of the weekend. I don't care who plays at quarterback. I like the Packers in this game. Tyler, I love hearing from you, the host of the Locked On Titans podcast, that Malik Willis should be starting a game for a football yep. team. And coming uh, from somebody that still gets tweets to this day about my 2022 Malik Willis takes, because I thought he was better than Jalen Hurts at the time to be the Eagles' right. potential long-term franchise quarterback, it's great to see the story that potentially with Jordan Love available to go, even if it's not at 100%, Willis has mm-hmm. instilled enough confidence in Green right. Bay that he could go in and potentially beat the Detroit Lions. And there might not be a team hotter in football right now than Jared Goff and the Lions. But Malik Mm -hmm. Willis, he has played that well when he comes in. Obviously, is he Jordan Love's ceiling? Of course not. But he has made no mistakes pretty much. He's had explosive runs. I think he leads the league in yards per carry for a player with a certain amount of attempts. He has Mm -hmm. the highest passer rating this season with a minimum of 30 attempts at 130.3. That's ahead of Lamar Jackson and Jared Goff. Considering all the weapons that Green Bay has, yeah, I mean, would it be tough for a backup quarterback to go in and, and beat the Lions? Of course, but And it's tough. I go back and forth because it's a massive game for the division. There's so many teams in the NFC right now battling for a playoff spot. It's like, if we can get 65 to 70% of Jordan Love, do we do it? Sure. 
But at the same time, I think Willis has played well enough in two and a half games where it might be okay to play the cautious approach for just one week. So I've always been a Malik Willis guy, and I kind of like the idea of playing him, and I don't mind the bet of Packers' money line. I think you've seen crazier things this year in a weird NFL season, Tyler. And I have two things that make me lean more into the Malik Willis thing than yeah. than already. Number one, the Lions, and I got to give a shout-out to the data queen, Michelle mm-hmm. Majuk, for bringing this stuff up, but <laughs> the Lions blitz – a ton now since they lost yeah. Aiden Hutchinson. And Jordan Love has been terrible against the Blitz and under pressure this year. And it's going to be even worse if he's limited in his mobility. So that's those two things together. Love struggling against the Blitz and pressure. And then the Lions blitzing more without Hutchinson. Those two things really lead me towards playing Malik Willis in this one. But moving right along, another NFC North team, the Minnesota Vikings. Taking a little bit of a step back here. They've been on a little bit of a slide. And I honestly think with Joe Flacco leading the Indianapolis Colts now that we could see the Minnesota Vikings regression continue for another week. Let's hear from my guy, Jake, from Locked On Colts about that. So for the Colts, I they have been so reliant on the big play, whether it's Joe or Anthony. Um, I'm looking for them to just be like a, a functional offense that can string a drive together. They get so behind early in – in the down, you know, in the down and distance. I think they were like two of 13 last week on third down because they put themselves in such poor positions. Uh, penalties have been kind of a recent issue. I think at six last week, obviously, you know, incomplete downfield passes and just this and that. So hit the layups. Uh, you would like to see the short and intermediate passing game exist whatsoever. I know Pittman sure. is banged up, but there is a Probably way for better him than to- Flacco than it was because yeah. Richardson couldn't execute that stuff. But I feel like like right. Flacco can throw stick. Yeah. Like keep, keep a drive alive. Like a, a, a five yard comeback is fine. You know, like there, I think veteran quarterbacks are, are more willing to just take what the defense gives. Them. And I think that Joe Flacco is the better quarterback right now, which makes sense. He's got a ton of experience. Anthony Richardson, only 10 starts. And he's kind of got the yips right now for whatever reason anyway. But even more so, that is highlighted even more, magnified even more in this matchup. Anthony Richardson may well under the the pressure that Brian Flores is going to bring in the exotic blitzes where you got safeties on the line of scrimmage and drop him back in a deep half like he's been doing. Joe Flacco is not going to be rattled by any of that. Joe, Joe Flacco's seen everything. So if you need somebody to just take what the defense has given you, don't take sacks. Don't be rattled by these pressure looks that you're seeing from Flores. Joe Flacco is going to do that. And with that being said, Louie, one of yeah. my best bets of the weekend is the Indianapolis Colts plus five and a half on the road against the Vikings. The Vikings are regressing. And I think that the Colts keep this one close. Colts plus five and a half on FanDuel. Yeah, I love it. I'm going to hammer it. I could even take the Colts money line in this game mm. with Flacco starting. Yeah. I'm not saying Minnesota's been a fraud this year. You don't start right. off 5-0 and and not be a legitimate team to a certain right. degree, a certain floor. But I will say, and I would love to see if the numbers back this up, but from what I've seen when I watch the Vikings is it feels like they're a very good first quarter team that starts off fast. And I think the first quarter has a lot to do with coaching. Kevin O'Connell right now would be yes. my pick to win coach of the year. A lot of that mm-hmm. has to do with your initial game script, all your game planning throughout the week. As the game goes on, though, and we saw this against the Rams where they started off fast, scored, what, the first two touchdowns on their first two drives, and then they kind of tailored off. It's like once Sam Darnold kind of has to carry, once Brian Flores can't scheme, elevate the lack of personnel and lack of legitimate talent he has on that defense, I start to wonder if these other NFC teams are going to catch up. And I think Minnesota's going to be in the playoff race all year. Mm -hmm. But I do wonder if that 5-0 season to start was a little bit of a mirage, not again, to a certain degree. And I, I like the, the Colts at five and getting five and a half points here. And I might even go as far as to say, I might take the money line on Sunday, Tyler. Yeah. I don't think it would be crazy at all for the Colts to yeah. win that game. I, th- I think that's a worthwhile shot there, but looking forward, the Los Angeles Rams, could they take the NFC West this weekend? Are the Denver Broncos for real? We're going to answer both those questions. It's Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And of course, today's FanDuel Friday is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the second half of the NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because right now, new customers can bet $5 
and get 150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can go check out the latest stats. You can view live play-by-play and so much more on the same page where you place your bets in the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. Again, you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, Louie, we're going to cap off today's FanDuel Friday edition of the Locked On NFL podcast. Talked about that Thursday night football matchup where the Jets kept their season alive. Talked about the Packers against the Lions, the Colts against the Vikings. A lot of great games this weekend, but we got more great games to dive into. Before we do, thank you for making Locked On NFL your first listen. Make sure that you check out the afternoon edition of Locked On NFL and step into the barbershop with Tony Wiggins as he chops up all the best NFL topics that need to be covered before this weekend. But I want to talk about this Los Angeles Rams matchup here. They travel up to Seattle, and uh, I really like the Rams money line in this game. It's minus 126. They may be favorites on the road, but I simply trust the Rams more with their pieces back intact than I trust this Seattle team. And uh, my guy Travis Rogers from Locked on Rams talked about that on Crossover Thursday. Don't let the Seahawks find their run game, something that the, the Rams have struggled with. For most of the season, most teams have been able to to run it on them, uh, and, and I think one of the ways that they'll be able to do that, if, if it's if it's going to work out, is they need to play with a lead. You know, when, when when the Rams can play with a lead and other teams have to chase, their inability to stop the run becomes a lot less problematic because teams are trying to pass to get back into the game against them. When when the Rams defense knows that their opposition is in a passing situation they become pretty good they have some guys that can get to the quarterback I mentioned Jared Verse earlier he's been terrific Byron Young had a pretty good game against the Vikings last week you're starting to see Kobe Turner Jared Verse kind of bring their games around so I I think it kind of starts right there I I think the Rams offense will be good you know I I I kind of always come back to this Sean McVay Matthew Stafford is a very good combination to start with as long as there's people to throw the ball to I think the offense will be fine. The question is whether or not they can stop anybody. Since I made my notes on this game, Louie, the yeah. Rams have gone from minus 126 to minus 112. There was a report out there that Puka Nakua hurt his knee during practice on Thursday. But since then, we've seen some reports saying that it doesn't seem to be anything serious. At the end of the day, I think this is going to be a shootout. The over-under on this game is 47 and a half. I would hammer the over on this one. And if the game's going to be a shootout, at the end of the day, I trust Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup more than I trust Geno Smith and Ryan Grubb. And and whether DK Metcalf is back in is going to be up in the air as well. And I think Metcalf really, really hurts this team if he's not out there. So to me, I'll take the over in this game. I'll take the Rams money line. And I think the Los Angeles Rams are leading the NFC West when we wake up on Monday morning. Yeah, I agree. I'm taking the Rams money line. I think the only reason they haven't been seen as a legitimate threat to win the NFC West and a playoff contender is because of all the injuries. And it's frustrating Mm -hmm. hearing yet again, Puka Nakua shows up on the injury report. But if he plays and Cooper Cup plays, you saw on Thursday against a 5-1 and Vikings team, Yep. The Rams are legitimate when they're healthy. Like they almost mm-hmm. blew things up. It felt like if they lost that game, they were going to trade away Cooper Cup and everything was going to be turned on its head. But suddenly, if they win this game at four and four, like you said, they could be leading the division. And when you look at the Seahawks' problems on the offensive line, as we heard from our guys for Crossover Thursday, Byron Young, you look at Kobe Turner, Jared Verse, Brennan Fisk, the rookies from Florida State. Yep. The Rams have a ton of of young pass rushers to go after Geno Smith. So if this game is close late, I think that young Rams front four could get to Geno and make a couple big plays. And I just trust, as you said, like Stafford versus Geno, if it's a one possession game, I'm going with Matt Stafford, who continues to be one of the most, and it's weird considering how long he's been in the league, continues to be one of the most underrated players in the NFL. And Seattle has been turning over the ball. That's one thing that they've done a lot of this season and a couple of turnovers in these games that are high scoring may be enough to to change the 
tenor of the game. And I got to give you credit, Louie. You did tip me off to this Rams and Colts situation. So a lot of credit there. I'm fully with you. The last game that I want to talk about here is a game that's near and dear to my heart. So, Louie, I don't want you to catch any secondhand hate here, but okay. I have been hard on the Broncos <laughs> this year. I've not been a believer in Bo Nix. I think the Broncos are fraudulent. Their record is uh, not, no, their team is not as good as the record is. But they have a chance to shut me up and prove it against the Baltimore Ravens. And the Ravens just lost to the Cleveland Browns. They are not an unbeatable team right now. And my guy Sayer from Locked On Broncos kind of talked about what needs to happen there for the Broncos to prove this on the road against the Ravens. So number one is try to make the opposing quarterback's life miserable. In this case, you're trying to do it against just a guy who's probably about to win his third MVP award, right? So that's the number one thing. Number two, your guys got to go make plays for the quarterback. Bo Nix had four total touchdowns against the Carolina Panthers, and still the Broncos left a number of huge plays out there on the field. Three touchdowns dropped by receivers. So uh, another couple of fumbles last week. Can't have that, and that leads to key number three do not make mistakes do not turn the ball over don't be fumbling the ball trying to gain extra yards don't be losing the football when you're getting pressured from behind if you're Bo Nix take care of the football let this be at least a one possession game going into late in the fourth quarter and give yourself a chance to win don't let the Ravens you know put their foot on the gas Look, ultimately, I think the Ravens do win this game. But mm. when I first saw this line, it was plus nine and a half for the Broncos. Now it's plus eight and a half. But I don't care. I still want that. I want those points. I think the Broncos have a good enough defense to keep the Ravens from pressing fully down on the gas. Derrick Henry's not going to run all over the Broncos all game long like he has. He'll probably break his customary fourth quarter backbreaker like he always does. But I don't think it's going to be a consistent thing. I think the Broncos have good enough personnel on defense and a good enough scheme under Vance Joseph where they're going to be able to keep this thing close like Sarah was talking about. So even if the Ravens win by seven points, 27-20 or something like that, I love the Broncos and the plus eight and a half in this one. Yeah, the Broncos have given up the seventh fewest rushing yards in football this year, the fourth Boom. fewest passing yards per game as well. Mm -hmm. And this is a top ten defense and yep. in pretty much every category, Tyler. So I do think the Ravens win close in the fourth quarter. They've allowed some inferior teams to be close in matchups mm -hmm. as well. Like you look at that Raiders matchup or earlier in the year, you look at last week's game too. So yep. I think the Ravens win. But yeah, if the line stays at eight and a half. Bo Nix, I don't believe, is like a legitimate elite franchise quarterback no. for the future, but did lead all rookies in touchdowns in October with 12, and I think he's playing more clean football, and that's yes. a recipe for success, or at least wild card success in the AFC when you have a good defense. So I think I would take Rams or Ravens money line, but I kind of am with you. I like Denver to cover. If yeah, one thing I would I, one thing I would say too is quarterback play has not been great this year. No, so while Bo, Bo Nix has had his moments where he hasn't looked great, you know he's getting the job done. And and a lot mm -hmm. of quarterbacks who also aren't playing that well aren't getting the job done along with that. You know what I mean? So you got to give Bo Nix his credit where it's due. And I've been a Broncos hater, and Broncos fans hate me back, and that's mutual hate. And I'm all I'm all for it. I thrive off negativity. You know what I mean? But. At the end of the day, I, I I think the Broncos are a good enough team to keep it close enough to where I like that with the points. But if they don't, if they don't, I'll be right back here to hate on the Broncos once again. But with that being said, that is going to do it for today's edition of Locked On NFL. For me, the Madman, Tyler Rowland, and my co-host, Louis DiBiase, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And as I tell you, every single episode, stay safe out there.